All right. So, you know, as much as I get a little bit upset or a little bit annoyed or maybe extremely annoyed with all these Bleacher Report articles and how a lot of them not only seem to be hating on the Bucks, that doesn't really bother me because, you know, I could always like some criticism of the Milwaukee Bucks, but a lot of times some of the points they make honestly seems like they don't even have a clue what they're talking about, like they did not pay attention to the Bucks last season at all. But I got to give them a little bit of appreciation because we're at that time of the season where it's about 10 more days of really nothing happening before we get back into the thick of things. And so in this last little stretch of the offseason, they are feeding families, at least for this channel, in terms of providing us content. And right now... <clears throat> We've got an article where it's every NBA team's worst nightmare going into the next season, and we're going to see what they've got to say about our Milwaukee Buckaroos. Don't snooze. All right, so you got the Bucks right here, and what they're saying, basically, their main point is right around here where they're talking about how, wait, where is that at? Yes, here it is. You've got Kay Mitty turning 33, coming off ankle surgeries, Brooke Lopez is 36, Damian Lillard 34, and how they could be past their prime. And I'll start off by addressing like the most part that I kind of agree with a little bit, and that's Brooke Lopez at age 36, where he saw last postseason that that's a man that still has what he had in his prime in terms of being able to hoo, 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 little hook shot in the post, slow basketball. He could do that, and I still think he could do what he's done with boot and holes or witches. Boom. Uh, boom, uh, hands up, you know, protect that rim. He could do those things. He could give you a post bucket. He could protect the rim. And he could knock down a spot up three. His efficiency was good in the playoffs, and I believe throughout the season as well for Brook, Big Brook. But we're seeing not only as he gets older, honestly, he's always been slow, but I think especially given how um, the NBA is getting faster and how almost every team has lineups where they have all shooters out there, him being slow is a little bit even more of a downside to where him being one of the Bucks' best four players, maybe even or even five players, it's a little bit worrisome when you have one of your best guys that you don't think you could play huge minutes against the best teams, especially when you have a coach that you can't necessarily trust to make the right adjustment at all times. Like if the Bucks play the Pacers again and Brooke Lopez is struggling out there, am I 100% certain he's going to make the right adjustment, move Giannis to the five and try the right lineup? No. So Brooke Lopez, not really necessarily even his age, although that's a part of it because age 36 is nothing to, you know, scoff about. But Brooke Lopez, just at this point of his career and where the NBA has gone, that does concern me a little bit. And I do think that if I'm John Horst, the one thing I have my eye on all season long is adding another big man that is just nimble enough to be able to, you know, help out a little bit at the rim, protect the rim, but also be able to get out there and guard stretch bigs like Miles Turner, play the pick and pop, um, be able to head screen, switch screens if needed, all that stuff, which Brooke Lopez doesn't necessarily do the best. Now, the other two things. We're going to start off um, with Damon K. Mitty by talking about K. Mitty. They bring up how he's 33 years old, coming off of ankle surgeries. And I know sometimes when I have my takes about K. Mitty, people are going to take it with a grain of salt because I love that man more than any other. But this is a, a take right here that I'm just, I feel like has not really any bias in it. And that is that. It seems like whenever K. Mitty performs in the postseason, everybody like, wow, Chris Middleton, look, this is look at this. This is crazy when it's happening. And then by the next season, everybody just acts like it didn't happen. Even like what he did in the finals, I feel like it's dang near gotten erased from history in the NBA, even from a lot of Bucks fans, how insane that man played on that entire run, how it was historic. It doesn't get talked about nearly enough. And why I, what I, I say that to say, that man was the best player in the series against the Pacers. He was playing great basketball as he did the year before against the Heat. He was averaging about 20, 25, 9, and 6. And they're talking about how he had uh, clean-up ankle surgeries, but he was performing like that with the hurt ankles. He had those ankles hurt during that series, and he was still performing like that. So... The ankle surgery, I guess I understand, you know, why it would be a concern him having another injury to recover from, but 
he was playing through the injury and playing elite. So post-recovery, you could expect he's at least going to get back to that level, which is a, was an elite playoff performer. And 33 years old in the NBA, that's still your prime years. To me, your prime is 27 to 34 generally. And in today's NBA, it seems to be stretching even longer. So 33, I'm not really worried about. Damian Lord, same thing. That type of player at this age, uh, we talk, we've talked plenty about, you know, that he had the divorce last season. He said it wasn't working out. I'm not even trying to give him excuses or anything like that. But game one of the playoffs, when he was healthy, the Bucks smoked on the Pacers, and he was going crazy. So I best, I definitely believe that come postseason time. Damian Lillard was going to be ready to go, and I think he will next season even to a higher level. And so for this Bucks team, the nightmare situation, let's stop acting like it's anything other than what it is. It's what it has been since they've won the championship. It's their core getting hurt. That is the only reason they haven't won a championship since they traded Eric Bledsoe. It's been that either Giannis or K. Mitty are hurt. If Giannis and K. Mitty are healthy, I love the Bucks' chances. Now, again, We've got to be looking for a big man, but everything else they're talking about, you know, it's a lot to ask relying on minimum contract guys in the rotation, but I'm sorry, Gary Trent Jr. That's better than guys. The Celtics have in their rotation. You know, that's better than like a Sam Hauser for sure. I mean, I know he's going to be starting for the bucks, but I don't think he's like a far cry from even a Derek white. Maybe that's a hot take, but nobody thought that highly of Derek white before he got on the Celtics and was able to be like a fourth, fifth cog. And then Delon Wright, everyone agrees. It's just a solid veteran that you could definitely count on. Torian Prince, same thing like as a seventh man that he's going to slate to be for the Bucks. that's not a lot to ask and then you're talking about less proven guys down here none of them are going to be needed that's that, that's just an extra bonus that raises the Bucks ceiling because if none of those guys are anything the Bucks still have a rotation that is solid you know you've got the starting five with the great freak Giannis K. Mitty Dame Brooke Lopez you've got six man of the year candidate Bobby Portis then you've got Torian Prince Delon Wright that's an eight man rotation come playoff time you really only need a seven eight man rotation the other guys just raise the ceiling of well what if Andre Jackson takes a leap and becomes an elite defender out there with his athletic ability that's possible and is be able to be able to be a playmaker offensively that can knock down the open three that just raises the buck ceiling you know similar to they're not even counting like Bochamp out there or um well, who's the other guy that uh, we want to be a part of? Uh, they, they are bringing up A.J. Green. But uh, those guys are just ceiling raisers. Hopefully, A.J. Green could step into the rotation. I believe that he definitely could. But if Doc Rivers doesn't play him, it's not like any of these guys are needed necessities this upcoming season. Those are just guys that raise the buck ceiling because they have a chance to maybe take a leap, just one of them, and that could be a difference maker for the Bucks. Overall, I'm just going to keep being the same drum. The Bucks could use a big. It's not a dire need at this point with the way NBA is um, playing right now. Giannis should be playing some minutes at center against some teams in the playoffs. But regardless, that's the only kind of need, but it's not even a huge necessity. Overall, the nightmare scenario for the Bucks is just what it has been, and that's injuries. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like or dislike, and subscribe. Please, yes, sir.